and now for something completely different. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much indeed, first and foremost, for having us here today. It's quite surreal. We're not yet a year old at the Influence Room, but it's quite surreal to be following on from Facebook. Um, and we've obviously heard a lot today uh, from a very sort of top line, boardroom, big hitters, big dogs in the industry, certainly in the tech, the data, uh, and the marketing mix. Uh, hopefully over the next 10 minutes, just to give you a little snapshot of what's going on. A little bit further down the ladder, there's a lot of noise, um, I'm sure you'll be very familiar with. There's a lot of noise between brands and influencers at the moment, and we are certainly on quite an exciting journey at the moment playing in that space. And it's, it's been fascinating to hear uh, a lot about what the other businesses um, and people here today have been doing. But hopefully we can just share a little bit of insight on what we're up to at the moment with the influence room. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a moment or two, but I'm going to start slightly narcissistically with a photo of me. Not many have done that today. It tends to divide the room quite quickly, uh, but hopefully you'll appreciate that this doesn't pass most people's Instagram tests with the eyelids half closed. It's a sort of bacon sandwich moment for those of you who know what I'm talking about. The reason I start with my weekend job before I come on to, to what I do during the week is that everything we are doing with the Influence Room ha has come from an actual learning. So I've been a broadcaster at Sky for about 14 years. I've done a bit of poker, a bit of tennis. This was actually going to be my big reveal, but I'd forgotten I'd sent my bio in. So it's actually been in the brochure for most of today. Um, <laughs> this actually is probably my favorite day in the job of the last 14 years. If any of you are into your rugby, this was the day last summer that the Lions beat the All Blacks uh, down in Wellington. Um, it was a phenomenal day, as I'm sure you can imagine. It actually turned into a phenomenal night as well, because uh, it's rude not to celebrate when you get down and beat New Zealand in their own turf. It was actually my brother's birthday, just as a quick aside as well, and we had a cracking night to celebrate uh, for him. Sadly, he wasn't actually able to join in his birthday celebrations because he is the Pratt in the hat in the background. <laughs> and about five seconds after this photo was taken, he was led away by Wellington Constabulary to spend a night at their pleasure. Um, <laughs> The irony is I'm here to sort of talk about brand building tools. I can tell you it damages a brand pretty quickly when you're broadcasting to several million people and your idiot brother is climbing in through the window behind you. <laughs> but that is very much, uh, very much for another day. So as I say, the reason that I show that is because what we are doing with the Influence Room has come from an actual learning. So about two and a half years ago, I was given a box. And over the last 10 years, I've been given various products and opportunities and experiences. I was given a box with about 500 quid's worth of Star Wars merchandise in it. Very, very cool product. There were books and games and DVDs. Uh, and in the top of the box was a little note that said, Alex, we're showing Star Wars on our movie channel all weekend. We would love you to enjoy this product and tweet that out uh, to your followers so they know that we're showing Star Wars uh, all weekend. So very, very cool product. Very, very clear what they wanted from it, which was a bit of social media exposure. exposure. I've got absolutely no interest in Star Wars. And I was left with this burning question why on earth have they thrown this at me? Even worse, if they've done some research and they've still thrown it at me, then there's a real problem. And we started to look into, uh, a couple of friends and I started to look into the industry, and you realize very quickly that there is a huge amount of uh, inefficiency in the space between brands uh, and influencers. We've spoken to hundreds of brands, huge number of influencers, and lots of PR agencies and talent agencies as well. There is a huge amount of wastage, time, effort, and money in trying to find the right people to talk about your brand. So we have come up with a tech solution, and it is called the Influence Room. It is a members-only platform, so everybody applies to join us. And it, it's a space where brands, agencies, agents, and influencers meet for mutually beneficial partnerships. And just very quickly, what we mean by influencers uh, is people of influence. There is a really nice quote, I don't know if any of you saw it as you walk into BAFTA today, a quote attributed to Mark Rylance, who said, we are a nation of storytellers. And what we are trying to create at the Influence Room is a community of really interesting people who are telling really interesting stories. So we're not as interested in the gym monkey who goes uh, every day and posts a picture of himself to his 20,000 followers. We like tastemakers, chefs, explorers. We like international sports people, actors, actresses, models, musicians, mixologists. If you're doing something really interesting, we're really keen to work with you. And what we have kind of created is a, say, is a disruptive technology. So what we are trying to address, and I'm sure most of you will acknowledge in this room, that at the moment, what happens in the space between brands and influencers is that it's all one-way traffic. It is brands trying to find people to be ambassadors, to talk about their product, to attend their events, to join in with what they're doing. But it's all going one way, and that's where the inefficiency lies. So what we've created is a disruptive technology which flips it. It delivers a reversal in the current influencer engagement model to bring brands and their advocates together, which therefore ends up sending you, uh, saving you sorry, time and money. 
So why is this interesting for brands? What is the most powerful uh, relationship that a brand can have with an influencer? I know all of you can find stats and numbers to fit any story, but interesting that Paul starts by talking about trust. Trust in a sort of, in this space, we feel very, very strongly comes down to advocacy. So 84% of people trust and are more likely to act on recommendations from peers and advocates over ads. And that hopefully sort of backs up something that we touched on a little bit earlier on. So what we are trying to create in the influence room is advocacy. How are we doing this? I see my slides had a bit of a haircut at the top, but it says, how have we delivered that? We're actually over this now. We're actually over 3,500 connections between brands and influencers in our first 11 months. And we have three mechanics uh, to the site which generates this advocacy. The first of which is brand to influencer. So to take the example of the Star Wars box, rather than them put it all together, spend time and money uh, coming up with the promotional material and then just chucking it at people willy-nilly, you come on our site with your promotional material. You say, here's what we're offering, £500 worth of Star Wars merchandise. We would love to hear from any Star Wars fans out there. We would love to give it to you, but in return, what we'd love you to do is give us a little bit of social media exposure. That goes on to a browse wall. Uh, we've got sort of an example of that here. Influencers on the other side of the fence apply. Everybody gets vetted on an individual basis. We've got some household names with massive social media. We've got some household names who don't do any social media at all. And we've got micro-influencers who are really, really interesting, highly engaged audiences in what they're doing. Once they're on and they're in, they get to build a profile. And they're able to, to shop, to browse what brands are offering. And if there's something of interest, you send the brand a little note. So if you see the Star Wars box, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'd love to get involved in this. My audience knows that I love Star Wars. I'd love to receive it. I'm happy to deliver uh, according to what you are looking for. Once the brand receives a number of bids, you can filter through, you can message, you can negotiate. Those of you accept, you send out the product. It goes onto, onto a to-do list for the influencer. They deliver as agreed. They mark it complete. Everybody wins over a mutually beneficial opportunity. The second space flips that round. So it enables an influencer to come on and say, I'm going to the BAFTAs in four weeks' time. I would love to hear from a tailor. I'm looking for a new suit for the occasion. I'd love to hear from any tailors. I'd love some new shoes. And if there are any hotels out there uh, who could potentially put me up, I'd love to hear from you. So as a brand, you can actually see what influencers are doing in real time. You can see the stories that they're telling, and you can say, actually, that's really interesting for us. He's just won gold at the Olympics, whatever it might be. You can jump on that opportunity, and you can agree to work together over whatever that exposure might be. Red carpet photos, perhaps. I'm doing an interview in the newspapers. I'm happy to do a social media takeover, a blog, I vlog, whatever it might be. So you're able, as a brand, to see what influencers are doing and to say, we'd love to play a part in that space. And the third mechanic is brand to brand. So you can do this through the site by simply coming on for example, and saying, we're running a big event, we're looking for goodie bag items. Brands can then see that on their browse wall and can drop your line and say, look, we'd love to come and play in that space. It's a really interesting audience for us, the one that you're working with. We'd love to play a part in that. And we actually have a sort of a management service at the back end as well. Um, we actually partnered BAFTA with ASOS before Christmas. So BAFTA's online audience is 18 to 35. Obviously fits beautifully with ASOS. They would love to get together, uh, which is what they're doing at the moment, and they're exploring that conversation to see how it can be mutually beneficial for both parties. So three mechanics, all about mutually beneficial opportunities, and the output of it at the end is advocacy. Just a few examples of some of the campaigns that we've uh, that we've run recently. British Airways came to us in a bit of a flat. They had a press trip leaving for New Orleans, and they wanted travel influencers to come on on this press trip. They spent a huge amount of time trying to find them themselves. They wanted influencers to come along and to shout about this direct flight to New Orleans. What they got were one or two very interesting travel influencers, but they also got a whole lot of lifestyle influencers, a reality uh, TV couple, a uh, celebrity who just won, been in the jungle and won there. And they said, we'd love to come on this, and we'd love to tell the story of this four-day trip, five-star VIP access to Mardi Gras. So they got the travel influencers talking about the direct route, but they also got the sort of the broader lifestyle influencers talking about what an incredible place Mardi Gras was, how everybody should get themselves out there. Oh, and by the way, BA Fly Direct. Uh, Jaguar Land Rover, a lot of what we're doing actually, it's worth mentioning, is offline. So a lot of the noise in that space between brands and influencers at the moment is all activated around social media. But we've got some really interesting stuff happening offline as well. So Jaguar Land Rover, uh, the example there is that we have a, a World Cup winner on our site. I dropped us online and said, I'm looking for a new car. I don't suppose there are any interesting conversations to be had put them together with Jaguar Land Rover, who said, we're really interested in you, not that interested in your social media, but if you can give us six nights of your year and come to any one of our dealerships around the country, um, we would love to get 100 high net worth clients into the dealership. Uh, you, can, uh, you obviously give us your spiel on what it's like to work in the media and to, and to win the World Cup. They have champagne and canapes, and they go home with a brochure 
and hopefully we get them back soon buying cars. So it's a really interesting, mutually beneficial opportunity. He gets a car out of it, they get his time. It works really well for both parties. O2 are finding influencers at scale, so if you want tickets to any event, we'd love to hear from you. You choose wherever it is you want to go, whatever it is you want to watch. Please just use the correct hashtag. The bottom left one is, is another really uh, interesting offline example. It's a young watch company, a very new watch brand, who are on the site saying, we'd love to hear from any people who love their watches and who are interested in what we're doing. They were approached by a really, really famous uh, British actor who said, I'm obsessed with watches. I've collected them all my life. I love what you're doing here. What does it look like? So they messaged back and said, well, if you love your watches, how, how about we do a bespoke watch together? He said, that's really interesting. They met up, and what the, what the exchange was was that they filmed the content of him talking about the watches of his life, designing his bespoke watch, and for that young watch brand, that is a currency and an access that, I mean, is very, very difficult to buy. Uh, the final one is Jacuzzi, who came onto the site saying, a few Jacuzzis, if you're doing something interesting, we'd love to, to join in with that. They thought they were going to end up in a sort of festival space, in a sort of lifestyle summer party. And what actually happened was they had three approaches from England rugby players and one from an England cricketer who said, I'm uh, not really into the festival side of things, but I can tell you now a jacuzzi would be absolutely massive, hugely important and very beneficial for my rehab. So jacuzzi had a really interesting learning from the influencers on the site as to where they could be used. And it started a new campaign for them and one that was, um, you know, it, I think is in fruition at the moment and we'll see the benefits of that quite soon. So it's happening across the board. It's not just about social media, but it's all about mutually beneficial opportunities. And in an increasingly cluttered market space where everybody is content creator and everybody is telling their own story, and brands are perhaps looking a little bit lost as to where to find the right person to partner, to spread their message. What we're very quietly doing with the Influence Room is creating a space where brands can find their advocates. It's a noisy, noisy space at the moment. We're going to touch on the data and, and the sort of the tech plays in the Q&A a little bit later on. But very quietly, what we want to deliver to brands are advocates. We think there's a real value. It's far stronger. It's far more trustworthy. It's got far longer term effects and far more benefits for both parties. Um, it's a very, very exciting space for us to be in at the moment. Early days, but lots, lots still to come as well. Um, so I will leave it there for now. Just hopefully something to think about as to what is happening a little bit further down the line. But thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Thank you for security. <laughs> we'll speak to you a little bit later on.